those of you that watch my channel know that I have a sawmill. I thought I would take a few minutes to, you know, lumber prices are through the roof. So these three boards is probably a couple million dollars worth of lumber um, that I'm going to turn it, you know, that I'm going to improve by planting them down and make them worth that. No, that's you know, obviously an uh, exaggeration, but you know, when a 2 by 4 is almost $10, an 8 foot 2 by 4 is almost $10, uh, things have gotten out of hand. Anyway, that aside, um, I just thought I'd take a few minutes to show you. I've been planning some stuff this morning and thought I would show you just a few things if you've got a planer um, to help you get some better lumber out of it. Now, there's probably all kinds of rules and all kinds of stuff out there, but this is what I do, and it helps me get a little bit better wood. Now, these, these boards, they're pine, and when I cut them, I rough cut them to an inch and an eighth, and that's because your band, or my band, will kind of do some wavy action sometimes. And so I have found that if I cut these an inch and an eighth thick, that I will definitely get a good three-quarter inch board out of there. So, you know, I'm probably wasting a little bit. That eighth might be waste, but I found when I was cutting them to one inch, I had quite a few boards that at times, that I, especially when I was cutting hardwoods, but um, I had quite a few boards that I couldn't get them. When I got to three-quarter, I still had more that I had to take out. So I cut them to inch and an eighth to start, <clears throat> and then what you want to do is kind of look at your boards and the main thing is if you I don't know if you can see Let's see what we're looking at. Okay, this board's got a little bit of a cup to it right there Okay, so when I put it in my planer, I'm going to support it on the bottom like this Well, if I do this, it's going to tend to rock. All right, so I put, put it through with the cup side down That way it's supported on both sides and it's nice and secure and what it'll do is it'll take that top part off and then the next pass, if I get that cup out, I'll flip it over and it'll knock these high spots off. And by the time I get through in the middle, I should have a nice three quarter board. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about, I'm just gonna run these three boards. I've done probably hmm, a dozen boards already today. Now this is really a bad board, okay? And most people would put this in their scrap. You know, I'm really frugal. <laughs> So I tend to, if, they, if I've got a decent stripe here, then I will usually bring them into the shop and clean them. So this side's nice and wide. So what you're going to see me do is I'm going to put the big side down and I'm going to knock this off one time at least until I get it flat on this side. Then I'm going to roll it over and I'm going to get this side flat and clear all the way down. Then I'm going to roll it back and I'm going to take I'm going to take off of this side until I get all the way down to the dimension that I'm looking for. And the reason I want to take most of the wood off of this side is so as you work your way down, the board's going to get wider. So by the time I get this board finished, I may be able to get a one by four out of this piece of trash. Okay. All right. So let's get started. Now you have to have a lot of room in order to do this. I'd probably be better if I did it outside, but. Uh, if, if, if you've listened to me before, you know, I don't work outside much when it's hot and sweaty. And it's hot and sweaty in here and i got the air conditioning on. So, uh, I do it inside most of the time. I have my chip barrel over here. And this chip barrel collects most of the shavings off of here. And I collect them into a big heavy duty garbage bag so that I can haul them out. I use them in my garden and stuff like that. So, I've got a video on some uh, making this thing and then I've got another video on some tips on how to make these bags work because if you if you don't if you just put a bag in there it'll suck up and stop your stop your uh, dust collection so anyway uh, that's what's working over there so you're going to see me I'm going to they're going to come off my across the top of my table saw here bring them back and run them back through there's not a good way my shop isn't really big enough for me to get you back where you can see really well so this is about the best I can do all right, let's get started. Today I'm using a G0453 Grizzly uh, planer. This has been an excellent planer.
All right, so here's that board we were talking about, and at three quarters of an inch thick, I now have this to, well, almost three and a half if I stretch it, which would make a one by four, sort of. <laughs> anyway, but you know, I can, I can use that, I, and down here, I've got even more, more width of five inches. So, you know, if I'm using a board about that long, I've got a pretty good size there that I can use. This is actually um, southern yellow pine, but it's, um, it gets these black marks in it when it stays kind of wet when it dries. And that's what happened with this piece right here. So as the boards were coming off of there, you'll see me, you know, flipping them and looking at them. And like on this one, you can see this kind of defects here, and it's not on this side. So if I was to run this one again, I would probably run it on this side, and I have a good chance I might knock these out of there. And I know that it's not going to get worse. Sometimes you'll see that you've got a defect here. This is a good example. So it's kind of small here, and it's bigger on this side. So the deeper I go, the bigger this defect's going to get. So if I'm trying to get this out, I'm, I'm going to have the opposite effect that this defect's going to get bigger. So just kind of pay attention. A lot of times there's nothing you can do. This, is, of course, isn't a fine piece of wood. It's got a lot of knots in it. But if you work at it and use a few little pay attention as you go and as they come off I'll flip them and figure out which way I want I put it in the stack and then when I come back I just have to pick it up you'll see a lot of times I still look at it because I don't trust myself alright well I hope that was somewhat interesting to you just to kind of see the workflow and give you a couple of ideas of how you can make better lumber out of some lumber that's not that great to start out with and produce you know in just a few minutes you can produce millions millions of dollars worth of lumber <laughs> thank you for watching